welcome to part six. And uh, let's add one thing to our notes if you're in my class. Uh, the DD command reads zeros and ones from the input device and writes zeros and ones to uh, an output device. get that in there. So the last challenge that I issued was to do a df hyphen h and you should have dev sdb mounted in one location and dev sdb2 mounted in another location. So let's unmount those drives. So we can use the umount command and we can just go dev sdb1 dev sdb2 And make sure that you have it, let's stay consistent, right off the root of the file system. So I've done a CD slash, right? Uh, MKDIR drive one, and mine is already there, so it won't do it, and drive two, so that you also have a drive one and a drive two. And I went ahead and I just did a CH mod hyphen RF 777 drive one, and I did that to drive two as well. So if I do a df hyphen h at this point, drive one and drive two are not mounted, but we have that 20 gigabyte disk we created way back when partitioned two ways. So let's make this persistent. If I were to mount, and you don't have to do this, dev sdb1 drive one, there it is and I can access drive one uh, I can access SDB1, but if I were to reboot the computer, that would be lost. I would have to physically type that command, and that's not such a good thing, especially when we're managing servers. Maybe we want to attach a large external drive, and we want to have media on it or something that we are serving out to our house using something cool like maybe Plex Media Server. So we're going to make this persistent. We're going to make it so that every time the computer starts up, this hard drive will get dropped onto that folder. We're going to do that using a file. Um, go ahead and pico etsy fs tab, and let's take a look at it. And this etsy fs tab contains a list of persistent mount points. And this is one that we'll look at a security move for Cyber Patriot that'll help at the very end here. Um, Etsy FS tab contains a list of persistent mount points. So this file is going to contain where everything is going to be. And you can see that UUID, this uh, unique identifier, universally unique identifier, uh, for SDA1 is that long string. We're going to figure out how to determine that. And we can see that it is on the slash of the root. You can see that we have this other UUID on boot EFI. So we're going to create, um, let's create two of these. So I'm going to hit Control K. I'm going to kill this line. I'm going to hit, hit Control U. I'm going to put it back because we can't afford to live, we can't Get rid of that. We need that for the computer to start. And I'm going to hit Control U two times. And I'm going to come back to the very end of the file. I'm going to change this last one to a zero. Here's what that means. Uh, if you change the last zero uh, to a one to a zero, it will not perform a file check every time you start the computer or if it detects that it was uh, unmounted like uncleanly. Uh, that'll speed up your boot process, but if there are errors with the drive, you may have to go in and manually fix those errors using a program called uh, FSOC. We should probably talk about that too. Um, if there are errors, it'll remount read only, and that's okay for this for now. So uh, hopefully both of these are ext4 file systems. If not, you'll want to modify that piece as we go. And we're going to mount the first drive on drive one. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to mount the second one on drive two, just like that. So that's where we want those. Now, we need to change these universally, universal unique identifiers. So let's delete everything after the equal sign 
and let's get your FS tab file looking like this. Okay, so let's put it on the first line and let's figure out drive one. Let's put uh, SDB1 on drive one and let's go find the UUID for it. I'm going to hit Control Z, Zulu to background this Pico. And you need to make sure that you're doing this as root, by the way. Can't write to FS tab unless you are the root user or you're using sudo. The command we're going to run is blkid, and we're going to run dev sdb1. And that'll give us the um, the ID, the universal, the unique identifier for it. And here's our UUID. So I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to copy it. So this is dev sdb1, and we have located that with the blkid command. And let's go ahead and get that in the notes. BLKID, identify the partition, UUID. So now I can type, now that I've copied this, I can do an FG to foreground back into Pico. I can right click and I can paste that. And we are good to go. I don't think I need to hit tab. We're going to find out. We'll be able to test it before we reboot. I'll come back over here. I'm going to hit control Z. We're going to do the same thing for dev sdb2. Copy that identifier without the quotation marks. Paste that in there. Let's save the file and then hit control X to exit. All right, so if I do a df h, uh, you can see that dev sdb1 is mounted right now because I did that a second ago. So I'm going to umount dev uh, sdb1, I'll umount dev sdb2 for good measure just to make sure that these are not mounted. Now you want to test this to make sure it works. So the command is mount hyphen a. And what mount hyphen a will do is it will basically do what the computer does at boot. It'll mount everything that's supposed to be mounted. So I'll hit that, and then I'll do a df hyphen h, and hopefully drive one and drive two are mounted correctly. So now every time you restart this computer, those partitions will be in those folders. Kind of a big deal when you add a new hard drive to a Linux machine to be able to do that, right? Let's look at a Cyber Patriot move inside of Etsy FS tab. While we're here, um, let's secure shared memory and we'll talk about what that is. Let's go down to the last line. So there's a special device on Linux. I'm going to do a control Z to background here. And if I do an LS dev, just like that, the device is SHM. So dev SHM. And uh, that is a shared memory uh, device. And so this particular device is, uh, it's a location where applications can share memory. And it's potentially exploitable. You don't want, for example, uh, you don't want code to be executed there. Okay, so we want to protect that. And there's a standard move we can make here. And so I'm going to add a tmpfs tab dev shm um, tab tmpfs tab defaults comma no exec comma no suid tab zero tab zero and then hit enter at the very end. So that shared memory device where applications can share memory, you can see we've got our no exec here, no SUID, and we've looked at that. Um, that's the sticky bit that we looked at before. This will secure the shared memory. And uh, it's, it's a common move. You want to write that one down, especially if you're a cyber patriot. Uh, competitor you want to secure shared memory. I figure while we are in um, FS tab, it would be a good idea to do that. So 
And in order to make that take effect right away, you can do a mount hyphen O remount dev SHM, and that will remount it with those secure settings. Just like that. Take note of that. Excellent advice there. Here's what we'll do for this checkpoint. My cat Etsy um, FS tab. Just go ahead and demonstrate to the instructor that you have two unique identifiers that are mounted to drive one and drive two. And if we have that, you'll get credit. Here it is on paper. And that reads like this. Demonstrate that your FS tab file has SDB1 and SDB2 set for persistence. Uh, in the next video, I think we'll wipe out our master boot record and go through a process of recovering from a corrupted master boot record.